the F-35 makes an Israeli attack on Iran more practical. On May 22 Israeli Air Force Commander Amik Norkin announced that its F-35I stealth fighters had flown on two combat missions on different fronts, showing as proof a photograph of an F-35 over flying Beirut. While details on those missions have not been released apparently, they were not deployed in a massive Israeli air attack on Iranian forces in Syria that took place on May 9 this nonetheless apparently confirmed the first combat operations undertaken by any variant of the controversial stealth jet which is currently entering service with the militaries of 10 countries after undergoing over two decades of development. And fact. Israel's F-35 Iadir or Mighty Ones will be the only F-35 variant to enter service heavily tailored to a foreign country's specifications. There had been plans for a Canadian CF-35, with a different refueling probe and drogue parachute to allow landing on short Arctic airstrips, but Ottawa dropped out of the F-35 program. It has become a common practice to create custom variants of fourth-generation jet fighters such as the Su-30, F-15 and F-16 for export clients, made to order with local avionics, weapons and upgrades that suit a particular Air Force's doctrine and strategic priorities. Today, Israel operates heavily upgraded F-15 Iram Thunder, and two-seater F-16 ISU for fighters. Furthermore, Israel in particular hasn't hesitated to modify aircraft it has already received fit its needs, for example, in 1981 it rigged its then new F-15A Eagle Air Superiority fighters to drop bombs, and used these first ever strike eagles to destroy the Iraqi Iraq nuclear reactor. However, the Lockheed Martin has mostly refused to allow major country-specific modifications to the F-35, despite the hundreds of millions of dollars foreign F-35 operators contributed to the aircraft's development. There is, of course, an efficiency-based rationale, given the additional costs and delays of creating country-specific variants and the fact that Lockheed is struggling to both produce F-35s fast and cheaply enough and build enough spare parts for the hundreds already in service. Israel, however, managed to carve out an exception. Though not an investor in the F-35's development, Tel Aviv was nonetheless quick to sign on to the program with an initial order of 50. It also negotiated a favorable deal in which billions of dollars worth of F-35 wings and sophisticated helmet sets would be manufactured in Israel, paid for with U.S. military aid. Furthermore, depot-level maintenance will occur in a facility operated by Israeli Aeronautics Industries rather than at a Lockheed facility abroad. The first nine F-35s entered operational service in December 6, 2017 with the 140 Golden Eagles squadron, based at Navatam Air Base near Beersheva. Six more should arrive in 2018. Israel will eventually activate a second squadron at Navatim, and retains the option for an additional 25 F-35s to form a third squadron, likely bust elsewhere. However, Recent reports suggest a third squadron may postpone for a decade in favor of buying additional F-15As, which trade the F-35s stealth for greater range and payload. Israel has paid a high price of between $110 to $125 million per F-35 for its initial order, but in the future unit cost will supposedly decline to around $85 million. The first 19 stealth jets received by Israel will actually be standard F-35A land-based fighters, while the following 31 will be true F-35 as modified to integrate Israeli-built hardware. However, most media sources have taken to labeling all of them as F-35 is, and it does appear even the initial batch will be retrofitted with an open architecture Israeli command, control, communications and computing, C4 system. The Lightning's sophisticated flight computer and ground-based logistics system has become a matter of contention with many F-35 operators. 
foreign air forces would like to have greater access to the F-35's computer source codes to upgrade and modify them as they see fit without needing to involve external parties but Lockheed doesn't want to hand over full access for both commercial and security-based reasons. Israeli F-35 is uniquely will have an overriding Israeli-built C-4 program that runs on top of Lockheed's operating system. One of F-35's key capabilities come from its superior ability to soak up data with its sensors and share it with friendly forces. Compatibility with data links used by friendly Israeli air and ground forces is thus an important aspect from Israel's perspective as it tracks the position of hostile surface-to-surface -surface rocket launchers and surface-to-air missiles systems. The new system will also allow the IDF to install Israeli-built data links and defensive avionics systems such as radar jamming pods. An official told Aviation Week the EAF expects the advantages of the F-35's low radar cross-section will be good for 5 to 10 years before adversaries develop countermeasures. There already exist methods for detecting stealth fighters, including long-range infrared sensors, electromagnetic sensors, and low bandwidth radars, though all have significant limitations and more exotic technologies such as quantum radar are also under development. Thus, the IDF particularly values the flexibility to install plug-and-play defensive countermeasures such as jamming pods as they become relevant and available. It so happens the Israeli firms Albert and Israeli Aerospace Industries are major developers of such systems. However, due to the F-35's highly fused avionics, such plug-and-play support needs to be built both into F-35 software and apparently even the airframe. The add-ons will be installed in special apertures in the lower fuselage and leading edge of the wings presumably, features only in the later production F-35s that arrive in 2020. Israel is also developing two different sets of external fuel tanks to extend the F-35's range. The first will be non-stealthy 425-gallon underwing tanks developed by a subsidiary of Elbit. These could be dropped when approaching enemy airspace. The pylons holding the drop tanks would reportedly detach as well so as not to compromise stealth, or used for missions in which stealth isn't necessary. Further down the line, EI wants to co-develop with Lockheed built on conformal fuel tanks which hug the F-35 airframe so as not to compromise stealth and aerodynamics. The F-35I will also be certified to carry major Israeli developed weapons systems in its internal weapons bay, notably including the Python 5 short-range heat-seeking air-to-air missile, and the Spice family of glide bombs, which combine electro-optical satellite and man in the loop guidance options for greater targeting versatility and have a range of up to 60 miles. However, country specific F-35 weapons capabilities are not unique to Israel. British Royal Air Force and Navy F-35s will be compatible with the Meteor and ASM-130 to air-to-air missile while Norway and Australia's Lightning S will be able to carry the Norwegian naval strike missile reflecting the importance of the sea control mission for these nations. The United States even would like its NATO partners to purchase F-35 as specially modified to deploy B-61 nuclear bombs. The Adir and Israeli Strategy Norkin's announcement of F-35 operations was as much a part of Israeli strategy as the actual deployment of the fighters. Tel Aviv wants potential adversaries, chiefly, Iran, Syria, and Hezbollah, to know that its fighters have already proven capable of infiltrating the airspace of neighboring countries, and that its stealth jets could at any moment launch an attack that may go undetected until the first bomb strikes a target. The F-35 has been criticized for its mediocre flight performance compared to earlier fourth-generation jets, meaning that it would be at a disadvantage in a short-range eye dogfight against enemy fighters. Supporters argue that the F-35 would leverage its stealth, sensors and long-range missiles to avoid getting that close to more agile opponent in the first place, 
and that the platform is really optimized more for striking targets in defended enemy airspace. The strike emphasis, however, is just fine with the Israeli Air Force, as since 1948 it has historically mostly trounced its opponents in air-to-air -air combat, but suffered heavy losses to ground-based air defenses in the 1973 Yom Kippur War. Since then, Israel jets have continued to face, and mostly defeat, hostile SAMs in scores of raids launched into Lebanon and Syria, though in February 2018 it suffered its first combat loss of a fighter in decades when Syrian S-200 missiles downed an Israeli F-16. Since 2017, there have been rumors of the F-35's involvement in these raids though most of these rumors were likely inaccurate due to the risk of losing an airframe over hostile territory at this stage. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, in power since 2009, clearly favors using military force to suppress Iran's nuclear research program, having opposed and undermined negotiated settlements. While Tel Aviv basically wants the United States to carry out such an attack, the F-35 makes an Israeli attack on Iran more practical. However, Israeli aircraft would have to fly through Turkey, or either Jordan and Syria and then Iraq to reach Iranian aerospace over 600 miles away and remember, key targets will likely be much further from the border. This also happens test the range limit of most combat-loaded fourth-generation fighters, meaning they would need conspicuous aerial tankers to make the raid viable. Furthermore, Israeli warplanes would have to disable or destroy Iranian air defenses, which would require additional time and aircraft. Israeli jets violated Turkish airspace in 2007 in order to destroy a nuclear reactor in northern Syria. However a sustained air campaign traversing foreign airspace would be more difficult to execute than a one-time raid. However, the F-35 has a greater combat radius than most fourth-generation jets, due to its inability to carry extra fuel tanks without compromising stealth. Furthermore, it could more easily penetrate Iran's air defenses, and evade detection by neutral countries, than fourth-generation jets, lowering the necessary size of a strike package. Over time, Israel will likely acquire additional F-35s, as it intends for the type to replace its fleet of over 320 F-16s, starting with the now very old F-16A Nets aircraft first acquired in 1980s. Reportedly, Israel is even interested in possibly acquiring F-35B jump jets down the line. One usually thinks of F-35Bs as serving from smaller aircraft carriers or island bases but Israel sees role for jump jets by dispersing them to remote improvised airstrips to avoid enemy air base attacks. This still seems a somewhat extravagant solution to the threat, given that the F-35B is more expensive and has inferior performance to the F-35A for most other purposes. This may explain why an F-35B purchase is allegedly more popular with Israeli politicians than the Israeli Air Force. Israel has also been a proponent of a two-seat variant of the F-35, which would be convenient for training purposes, and also allow a back-seat weapon system officer to manage the F-35's precision-guided weapons while the pilot focuses on flying. At any rate, the activities of Israel's adiers are likely to continue to remain conspicuously in the news, if less so on hostile radars.